Hello everyone, uh, my name is Steve Williams. I'm a Global Solar Panel Cleaning Consultant and Managing Director of Clean Solar Solutions. Today I'm going to present a slideshow presentation that was actually presented in the Floating Solar Conference in Amsterdam in September 2019. And I'll just reproduce this slideshow today. It discusses the issue problems posed from cleaning and maintaining floating solar arrays. To begin, we start with a history of floating solar in the UK. First floating solar array was Sheeplands Farm, which is a 250 kilowatts floating solar array installed in the UK in Reading. It was installed in 2014. It were, we completed Europe's first floating solar panel clean in December 2014. Currently, the largest floating solar array that we have in the UK is the QE2 Reservoir, which is a 5.8 megawatt installation which was commissioned in 2016. We also have a Godly Reservoir, which is a five megawatt installation that also was installed in 2016. Currently, it's the water utility companies in the UK that have the most interest in floating solar, but there are some other smaller individual systems that are being installed, mainly by farm owners. And then we currently have one five megawatt installation under tender with some of the smaller systems also being installed. So what are the harsh lessons that we've learned in the UK? Well, there were some unexpected health and safety risks and concerns that didn't become apparent until building had started. We found that the installation of the systems was very easy, but in some cases the system design was flawed. We go on to discuss what those flaws were. Access is uh, one particular issue. Obviously ground mounted solar and roof mounted solar are relatively easy to access, but floating solar in the middle of a reservoir or still body of water or even an open body of water on the sea uh, is tricky to access. There are instances where powerboat licenses are needed uh, because there's no pontoon walkway out to the array. So when it comes to the cleaning and the maintenance of a floating solar array, uh, access really needs to be taken into account. Powerboat licenses and powerboats can obviously result in increased costs and uh, it's very difficult to gain access to array when you have a restriction uh, such as a powerboat license if you don't have one. We've come across multiple instances while cleaning solar panels and inspecting floating solar arrays where there are submersed MC4 connectors. Obviously that's a, a big problem. Also we've come across instances where combiner boxes are mounted as part of the walkway. This means that we need to physically climb over the combiner box to get to the next section of the array. And in some cases, the combiner boxes are 1.2, 1.3 meters wide. And when you have a, a floating solar array that's constantly on the move and you're trying to negotiate an object that's probably two to two and a half feet tall and 1.2 meters wide, it can be quite tricky and quite dangerous to navigate your way over the combiner box to get to the next section of the array. Another problem as well that we've come across is that the walkways between the panels are not full of floats. There are quite sizable gaps between floats. Uh, we understand that this is to cut down on the design cost or the installation cost, but when it comes to maintaining and cleaning floating solar arrays, you really do need some full walkways of floats between the panels so that the panels, all of them, can be easily accessed. So what are some of the other harsh lessons that we've learned? Well, one in particular is to do with the birds. And as we can see from this particular picture, the birds have a huge, huge detrimental effect on the output of a floating solar array. In essence, birds will never ever nest on open water. It's an impossibility. And they cannot set up base where there is a water. However, when you install 20, 30, 100,000 solar panels into the middle of a body of water, you are instantly creating a very attractive reservoir for uh, birds to come and nest in. They've got dry space, they've got sheltered space, they've got warm space. And so all of a sudden this island that you create in the middle of a reservoir can become very appealing and the birds will flock there in their hundreds and thousands and set up camp. Here we have a separate floating solar array, but again, we can see that the same issue is starting to arise. The birds are coming in numbers and they're setting up camp on the solar array and the bird droppings 
that they uh, deposit on the solar panels have several different effects. They create hot spots within the solar panels and that can cause the solar panel as a component to break down and eventually fail. But as well as that, you have instant redu reductions in output as a result of the bird droppings. The solar panels will not produce anywhere near the amount of electricity that you intended them to produce. And if you have a financial model that depends on a relatively high PR, then this can really dent your business model when you find that you're losing 10, 15 or 20 percent as a result of bird droppings. Here we have another instance of bird droppings as well. This is slightly different because the birds are actually climbing up from the uh, water frontage there onto the floats and then making their way across the panels, depositing bird droppings as they go. So different birds behave in different ways. Some will land in the middle of an array from the air, others land in the water and they climb onto the array from the water. And this results in different soiling patterns, different types of soiling and different methods also when it comes to cleaning the panels and getting rid of that soiling. So another risk that we have to do with the birds, not, not really related to the bird droppings, is that of fire. Um, we've already mentioned that no bird can nest on open water but that we create a, a huge bird sanctuary when we drop 20 odd thousand solar panels onto open water. The birds will bring with them dry twigs. Uh, they also, as we've seen from the photos, deposit bird droppings. And the birds themselves, they all create an electrical current when they touch the wrong piece of PV equipment. Nesting birds bring an inherent fire risk. And there have been scores of case studies and examples of birds causing fires from nesting near electrical equipment. We've seen this particularly in the UK on the rooftop market, where there's been numerous instances of fires. Some of those fires have been able to be attributed to birds nesting underneath the solar panels. And then there, where there's been a fault or where they pecked away at the wiring or a particular component, then this has caused the DC side of the system to arc, the nesting material gets ignited, and then the fire spreads from there. And it's not unusual for us either as a company when we go to clean solar panels or install bird proofing measures to stop the birds from gaining access underneath the panels that we pull out an electrocuted pigeon or seagull um, that's obviously suffered as a result of their behaviours underneath the solar panels. So as we briefly mentioned these bird populations they start out small but they eventually grow into hundreds and thousands of colonies of birds. Uh, depending on the type of bird that it is, they may come as individuals or nesting pairs, but very often they come in their, their hundreds and their thousands. In the UK, we have colonies of seagulls that come and they can easily be numerous, numbering into the hundreds. And from the starlings point of view also, if you get the starlings come, then they can number into their thousands. Um, makes a very pretty picture while they're flying around above your solar array but not such a pretty picture when they're depositing all of their bird droppings onto your solar array. When we're coming to clean the solar panels and also from a maintenance point of view also, the bird droppings can create a risk to human health because they carry different types of airborne disease and spores. And if inhaled, then this can be detrimental to human health. So keeping the bird droppings down, the level of these droppings is certainly a consideration when it comes to working on a floating solar array. So there are various different types of deterrents that can be fitted. We cannot think with a floating solar array that the birds won't come. Maybe they won't come to our floating solar array. Well, our experience here in the UK says that the birds will come. It's inevitable. Uh, so in our opinion, measures must be taken to inhibit bird nesting on a floating solar array. Uh, we also think that this must be done in design phase. It should be part of your capex expenditure to install some sort of uh, floating um, solar array that incorporates bird deterrence. And so it's always good to consult with a company with experience. They can advise as to what bird deterrence you will need, uh, the type, and also how you can build them into the floating solar array and also include, include that cost in the floating solar array also. So Clean Solar Solutions offer a consultancy service. Why should you choose Clean Solar Solutions as a company? Well, we have a broad spectrum of knowledge across uh, utility scale ground mounts, 
commercial, industrial, residential, roof mounted, solar arrays, carports and floating systems. We've cleaned and maintained all of those systems. We also have a broad spectrum of knowledge in many countries and uh, we've experienced soiling types in those various countries as well that differ. So our experience has taken us cleaning in the UK, Ireland, Belgium, Gibraltar, Vietnam, Mexico and Australia. So the consultancy service that we offer is designed to assist PV array designers. As we mentioned, we feel it's important that we get involved in the design phase of any um, large scale rooftop particularly or floating solar array because there are instances where our knowledge is valuable. There are many, many instances in the UK when solar arrays were put onto roofs particularly and no consideration at all was given to cleaning or maintenance. So we can also assist O&M companies and asset managers to make sure that they're fulfilling their contracts and having their contracts fulfilled. We've mentioned that one of the things that we look to do is to avoid the mistakes of the past when it comes to system design. We can examine uh, proposals, system design proposals for access, safety, cleaning and maintenance. We're also able to address the current cleaning schedules on existing sites versus the real world solar panel cleaning needs. In the UK, it seems very common to have uh, one clean a year built into an O&M contract when actually it may be that that is completely uh, underkill, as it were, and that multiple cleans on a site will give a better return on investment or cleans of parts of a site will give a better return on investment. So even though you're increasing your solar panel cleaning cost as a whole, the output that you will get as a result of the cleaning may well outweigh the cleaning cost. And we're able to uh, provide advice if that would be the case on your sites. We can also examine the O&M contract agreement for panel cleaning to see if your current panel cleaning company is fulfilling that contract. We can design bespoke cleaning schedules for single site projects or portfolios containing hundreds of megawatts. And we look to work with companies for the long term. The main aim of the consultancy of clean solar solutions is to increase yield by way of an optimized cleaning schedule. So we're able to examine each site on a site by site basis to see if we can optimize the current cleaning schedule that you have in place, which will give you a greater ROI. And we feel that the consultancy advice that we provide for companies once will yield dividends for many years. If we are involved in the design aspect of the asset, well, you'll be getting a bespoke cleaning schedule that will benefit the asset as a whole for its life or if it's an existing asset and we're engaged to optimize the portfolio of an existing asset then we can uh, obviously help with the operation side of that asset for the rest of its life if you'd like further information about our consultancy service or about floating solar arrays please feel free to email us or you can call our uk number there my name is steve williams thank you very much for watching we look forward to speaking to you soon